Good morning, church. The title of my message this morning is What Did You Come Out to See? Those are the words of Jesus. Jesus in relation to John the Baptist and the crowds of people that were coming out to see this man. Of course, uh, John wasn't all that becoming by way of his looks. In fact, uh, he wore camel hair, which is not something you certainly want to give a hug. You wouldn't want to be hugging him too quick, you know. He, he ate locusts and honey. There you go. I don't know your dietitians how good that is. There's not a chance he had underarm deodorant. And he's standing in a pool of water every day for most of his life. Now you'd have to ask the same question, wouldn't you? What did you come out to see? And Jesus asked this question of them because he knew of John that John was not there for entertainment. And when the people got there, if they weren't there for the right reasons, they would have been extremely disappointed. You can imagine, can't you? Word had got around. He's either a crazy man or he's a prophet. Let's go and see. And as you're walking down the hill and you're looking in the distance, you see this fellow in a stream of people walking into the water and you'd feel a sense, well, something's happening. What's happening? Something's happening. Jesus looks at them and says, what did you come out to see? Matthew 11, verse 8 to 10. Well, what did you go out to see? A man clothed in soft garments. Indeed, those who wear soft garments are kings in houses. But what did you go out to see? He asks it a second time. What, a prophet? Yes, I say to you, and more than a prophet. For this is he who is written, Behold, I send my messenger before your face, who will prepare your way before you. The the message of John, the ministry of John was to prepare the way for Jesus. Before a great move of God, there is almost always, indeed I would say always, a preparation time in our life. A preparing. Where God is setting the table. What does he say? He sets a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The enemy's coming against you. And there are three or four angels, you know, putting the cloth over the table. And and, and, the salt and pepper shaker there. And and the plates are going out. And the cutlery's coming out. And the demonic's powers are going, what are they doing? We're messing with this person's life. And God's going, "Uh, yeah. For the time being, but I'm preparing victory right here and right now. And then you sit down and and what the enemy has come to do, God has prepared a way of victory for you. This message that John had, if it had been entertainment that the people were looking for, then they would have been bitterly disappointed. In Matthew 3 verse 4, we read this message. In those days, John the Baptist came preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying he had one message. That was it. Now, you, you, you've travelled through the desert. You've got your kids there. You've given them their tucker box lunch, you know, in case you're there for a long time. You've had a chat as a family that morning. This, uh, what are you going to do? It's Saturday. What are we going to do today? I don't know. Let's go and see that guy everyone's talking about. You know, that fella that's, uh, you know, out, he's out in some pool. Maybe we can have a swim if he's boring. Who knows? You know, but let's get out there and, and come on, children, get all ready. Why do I want to go and see some old man? No, 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 no. It's going to be exciting. And then you get there. And the children say, what? That's it? Uh, Hang on, what's he going to say? What's he saying? He's saying something. 
lean in. He's saying something. There's something that he's saying. There's a crowd. They're all, let's, let's get closer. Let's get closer. Uh, what did he say? Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Jesus also came and was baptised. And then the Bible tells us that after his baptism, he is led into the wilderness by the Spirit of God. More often than not, a preparation time also has with it a wilderness experience. And then, apart from this and on top of this wilderness experience, is the devil tempting Christ three times before a great breakthrough in God more often than not there are great temptations to take you out my question is what did you come out to see for that is the question that Jesus had for these people what did you come to see he doesn't look anything like Elvis Presley this fella another like Michael Jackson he can't sing. He's not a muso. Probably hasn't had a shave in his life. But he has a message to prepare the way. What did you come out to see? Yes, this is what I know. A move of God does not always look like what we want it to. Jesus is then tempted by Satan three times, commences his ministry. The first place he goes to is the temple. Reads from the book of Isaiah and he is shunned immediately by the people. An instant failure, according to the world. And so many people would give up at this time. And you have a burning desire and you're looking forward to something. And God is taking you through these various different experiences and you turn up. God touches your life in a supernatural way. Be ready for the wilderness experience. Be ready ready for the temptations that will draw you away. What did you come out to see? A lot of people praying for revival. I hear about it all the time. In fact, my entire walk with the Lord, I've heard people praying for revival. Well, Jesus spoke of What may be called the first revival in the New Covenant, the New Testament. He said that the Holy Spirit would come upon them. And he said that there will be great power. Now, we love to hear those sort of words, don't we? I tell you what, you know what's going to happen. You better come this Sunday because this Sunday there's going to be great power. There's going to be great authority. There's going to be great this. But my question is, what did you come out to see? For the same power, for a for power was given unto those who came to John. That's right. That's right. <coughs> but it had nothing and it didn't look anything like what they came out to see. What they came out to see and what John delivered were two different things. And that's the question I have for you. What did you come out to see? Of course, Jesus speaks of this. What is going to happen? Now, they've lived through the crucifixion and the resurrection and he's been with them now 40 days, sharing with them. He stood on the side, on the beach and and told them to cast the net on the other side. And already there's some more miracles happening between him and the disciples. He did not share that 40 days with the world. He shared it with those who he was preparing. And then he says, the Holy Spirit will come upon you. Wade in Jerusalem. Great power. And you're going to be my witnesses. But what did they come out to see? Let's have a look. This is what they were interested in. Acts 1 verse 6. Therefore, when they had come together, they asked him, saying, Well, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? They had a different mindset to what Jesus had. Jesus is talking about the power of the Holy Spirit to be his witnesses. And what they're interested in is dominion and taking over and the restoring of Israel. Jesus was interested in the restoring of men's hearts. And there was something way beyond 
friend, I'll say this to you. You're looking for a revival out there. God is looking for a revival in here. Do you get what I'm trying to say to you today? I used to say the best years are ahead. And then I realised I was defeating hope within my heart because this is the day the Lord has made. The response of the disciples is no different to the response of so many people these days. Even the crowd, the Holy Spirit has come upon them. And the people, the disciples are speaking with other tongues. And they come and they say, these men must be drunk. And Peter says, oh no, it's not even 10 o'clock yet. The pubs are not even open. No, and, and everyone's looking around, but they're speaking in our own language. And what are they saying? What are they speaking? And here's a message for you. They were speaking the wonderful works of God. That's what they were speaking and these people are hearing these words. And the response of the people in complete bewilderment. Now Peter is anointed with the Holy Spirit. Oh yes, he had already been what we might call saved, a new creation. We read at the end of John where Jesus breathed on them and said, receive thou the Holy Spirit. He had died and been resurrected and now they were new creations in Christ. But there was something more that they needed and that is they needed an anointing of the Holy Spirit with dunamis power. Paul later to speak of the gifts of the Holy Spirit which I've taught on this year. And they looked upon this man, Peter. Do you remember one part in scripture where they say these are uneducated men? What is going on? But they knew that they had been with Jesus. Something was different. When you have been with Jesus, something changes within you. When you get around somebody who's influential, yeah, they, they rub off, they rub on off on you, don't they? You begin to talk with them, you talk like them sometimes, dress like them sometimes, they rub off. Well, Jesus had rub off on these men in a way now that was going to change the world forever. And what you might call a revival. Just be aware. The word revival, if you're looking for one, means to be revived. It actually means to wake the dead. Can I just tell you? I love the idea of a revival, but I've had a revival in my heart since I met Jesus. You might need one, but I'm already awake. I don't need any waking from the dead. I'm alive in Christ. How about you? What did you come out to see? What did you come out to see? And of course, uh, the same message of John. In Acts 2 there we read, so they were all amazed, perplexed, saying, so they were all amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, whatever could this mean? Others mocked, saying they are full of new wine. Peter now, full of the Holy Spirit, anointed, baptised in power, not to do a demonstration, but to deliver the anointing and the good news of Jesus Christ. That's what God is interested in. Can you get that one? What did you come out to see? What did you come out to see when you came to church today? What did you come out to see when you got married that day? Because it looks a whole lot different later on than it did on the wedding day. (laughs) What did you come out to see? We know how to get a crowd. It's not how to get a crowd, it's how to keep a crowd and then it's how to have lives changed for Jesus Christ. Peter rises up and says, now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart because Peter had told them, had shared with them how they had crucified Christ. And they were cut to the heart. And said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? Oh, it's a different, it's a different, it's different now. Peter just says it how it is. You ever heard of the saying, beaten, beaten around the bush? Stop beating around the bush, bush with people. What's wrong with my words this morning? 
Stop beating around the bush with people. And tell them how it is. If you love them, tell them you love them. If they've got a problem, tell them they've got a problem. And don't be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. We love to cover things up, put a little pretty ribbon on it. And they're cut to the heart. And Peter said to them, the same words as John. This is in the middle of what you might call a revival. And he says, repent, 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 turn away. Stop getting caught up in stuff. You're more interested in the disciples. Moments before, just moments before the disciples are interested in the restoration of Israel. Now the only thing that consumes Peter is repentance and a relationship with God. Now he understands it's not about the event. It's about a changed heart. Now he's got it finally. He says, repent and let every one of you be baptised in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is to you and your children and to all who are afar off, as many as the Lord God will call. For those who came to John and those who came on the day of Pentecost, the message was exactly the same. Repent and stay focused on the kingdom of God. People are praying for revival. Here's what I know. Revival is in the hands of God. God chooses those things, not me. The only question is not whether a revival is in the hands of God, but whether I am. You want to stay in the hands of God. These things come and they go. The parades come and they go. Seasons come and they go. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. In season and out of season, what did you come out to see? You're wanting to get married? Here's what I know about marriages. And I say this to people before I do their wedding service. I say, I'm not into wedding days. I'm into marriages. I'm going to prepare you to be married. For this I know, your wedding day will come and we will go. And when he snores... You're going to have to love him through it. And when she doesn't look like she's 22 anymore, you're going to have to love her through it. Because the events come and they go. What we want to do is stand the process of the Lord. Long term. Are you with me? Do you understand that? whether it be starting a business. And I know I have started businesses, a number of them. I know the events come and they go, but it's the two o'clock in the morning emails and the consistency and the process. It's the making of friends. It's the going to church. It's what happens before a revival and after a revival that matters, not the revival itself. Do you understand what I'm trying to tell you? Because people are coming out to look for the spectacular. I can grow a church. This is not the only church we've grown. I I have seen God move. But what did I just say? I have seen what? You you would see now I'm testing you as a preacher. You know, man, they they say people forget uh, what you have to say after all. And I just gave you the answer. I have seen God move. If God's going to do a miracle, let God do the miracle. Hallelujah. As for me and my house. You see, there is a time of preparation. Now the disciples are in the middle of the revival in Acts 2. But now what was required was the same message that John and that Peter gave, that they would continue to live live a life of repentance toward God, turning away and turning toward. You can repent is a good word. I don't know why so many Christians don't like that word anymore. It's almost like it's a bad word. It's a very, very good word because it's what God does in me that matters. And here's what I know. 
if what has happened in your heart in God is not good enough for you now, then no revival ever will be. If what God is doing, if you are truly saved, friend, you will have had the truth and the truth has already set you free. I have spoken in conferences with thousands of people and I know how to hype the crowd. But I also know when it's truly God and truly me. And I prefer truly God because it then will be long lasting in people's lives. And so it's what happens before. Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Prepare yourself now. There is, a, I, I'm on YouTube as you know and, and do a lot of them. And, uh, and I find that if I have something exciting they call them a thumbnail if you have something exciting in the thumbnail people will watch and youtube tell you well focus in on the thumbnail then focus in on the content and i have looked at all my different youtubes the ones that really got the highest attention the fastest you know the ones that got the fastest attention it's the mark of the beast oh that gets people's attention really fast the world is ending. Oh, that really gets people's attention. And then I come on and I say, well, actually, not quite yet. I just wanted you to come on. <laughs> they go, ah, he got me. He got me. He got me. The truth is this, friend. Just as with John the Baptist, just as on the day of Pentecost, what did you come out to see? And I'll tell you what God would have you see. Say these words with me. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. Now receive those words. And all these things, love, joy, hope, kindness, goodness, Galatians 5.22, that when you are on your own, just as Jacob wrestled on his own, that your first call will be to him to seek first the kingdom of God you see a person like this can't be disappointed because their faith and hope is in God a person like this actually can't be defeated because their hope is in the Lord the name of the Lord is a strong tower the righteous run into it and are safe yeah I believe in this hour the church needs to get back to the roots of what we truly believe and that is it's not about the event It's about the Lord Jesus Christ, was, is, and always will be. It's about experiencing the love of God and the changing work of the Holy Spirit in our heart. It's about this. If God's work in me right now is not good enough for me, if I'm not satisfied in that, then no revival, no event, no miracle is ever going to be. Taste and see that the Lord is good maybe one day when he does a work in your life. Now, hang on. Taste and see that the Lord is good right now. Right now. He is good. Can you receive that? He is good now. I was talking to a married couple a little while ago. No, there's nobody here, so don't think I'm doing that. Okay. And they hadn't long been married. And the fellow said, but I'm not really sure. I said, my friend, you've just been married. If you're sure, not sure now, you're never going to be. My goodness me. My goodness me. They had a little bit of work to be had, but they're still happily married. Praise God. All right. You come to church, what did you come out to see? We don't have our musicians here today. You just stuck with me. But I'll tell you something, that it's not the quality of our music, but it's the character of our worship that matters. It's not how handsome or pretty he is, husband and wife, but it's the heart of the commitment that you made when you said, I do. Do you understand what I'm saying? Many will come and many will go. But will you leave me also, Jesus said. Only you have the words of life. We don't understand you, Jesus. You do funny things. You talk about eating your 
your body and your blood and raising the temple and all these sort of things. And we haven't got a clue what you're doing, but there's something about you. Only you have the words of life. And of course, later they came to understand. It's not the temporary entertainment that John was trying to offer John the Baptist. But he was preparing their hearts for the Son of God. And when he turns up, Jesus himself is led into the wilderness, tempted by the devil, shunned at his very first meeting. How do you like that? What a way to start your ministry. You get up to preach and they want to kill you. That's around about how my ministry started. Actually, I remember that. (laughs) What did you come out to see today? What did you come out that everything will go well in church today? That the minute word would be so good that the church, that everybody will have turned up today? There'll be that buzz in the atmosphere and the cake is going to taste really good later. Or did you come because you said, Lord Jesus, I came to you the first time and I'm going to keep coming to you every day and I'm going to get into fellowship and I'm going to stay there. And Lord, if it's not what I get, it's what I'm going to give because I am devoted to you and the church that you created. John 17, you know what Jesus is truly interested as I bring this to a conclusion? How did I go today? Oh my goodness, look at that. Pretty good. Wow. Those of you on the recording, this is, I just looked at the clock. This is an early mark. Do you feel it? I I, I tell you something, right now, is it just me? I feel an anointing of the Holy Spirit right now. Why don't you just breathe that in? Physically breathe it in. Just breathe it in. I'm not doing theatrics here. I can't stand theatrics. I cannot stand it. That drives me nuts. Uh, I was looking at a YouTube clip and a brother in the Lord that I know is running up and down, running up and down. He's got this, this lady and he says, I, I think you could, sorry to say this, it's just it's the things that get to me, okay? Might not get to you, they get to me. Got her arm and he's doing this with the arm up and down. I know it's healed, I know it's healed. I could, I'm looking at this thing and thinking, mate, if there was nothing wrong with it before you start, it's going to be after it, man. You are just rattling that arm. And I'm confident, she said, I'm healed just to stop him. But the way I see them in, I want to be like Jesus. You see, my real father was no model citizen, wasn't the sort of man you'd want to be like. But my heavenly father is. So I want to be like him. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? I want to be like Jesus. He noticed an old woman putting some money in the coins and and said, look at that, she doesn't have much, but she's given it all. He stopped. He was busy going somewhere. But another woman touched the hem of his garment and he stopped for people. Have you got time for people today? What did you come out to see? Uh, We stand in an old building. The preacher just having a go. Playing recorded music. But it's not any of that. It's the character of your heart and commitment to Christ that matters. What is Jesus really interested in? If I want to be like him, what what do I want to be like? Who do I Lord, what do you want from me? First of all, I think he would say, is my best good enough for you? And I was driving an old HR Holden, if you know what they are. It was a panel van and and, uh, and I would pick up the youth group. And uh, I remember I went to Palm Beach to pick up one of the girls. And the mother came up and said, you have a panel van? And I went, yeah. She said, let me look at that car. So she comes out and opens the back. And yep, there was a mattress there. But it was for the youth people to sit on it. She said, you have a mattress in the back of your panel van. I said, well, that's actually for my drum kit. She said, yeah, that's what they all say. I said, no, 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 no. It is, it is. And I said, and also the young people sit on it. She said, they better sit on it without you. And I said, goodness me, I'm just here to pick her up for church. She said, and you bring her back from church and I'm going to ask her. And I said, okay, that's fine, you know. And I'm driving and I'm driving all over the coast. I used to drive out to Narang, Palm Beach, all over the place to pick people up for church. Now my HR faded blue Holden with the gear stick on the on the what do you call the column there? 
right? Wouldn't always change gear properly because every Friday without notice, every Friday I would have to fill the engine with uh, oil because it would completely gone by that time. Every Friday after work, I would go down, fill it, yep, there you go. Spark plugs every two or three weeks, so she was oiling up pretty bad. Brake fluid every few weeks just to make sure we didn't kill ourselves. And, of course, I had central air conditioning because there were two big rusted holes under the floor. It's was fantastic, so you could see the road. You know, so I'd put a mat over there and tell anyone sitting there, don't put your feet down there too hard. Put them forward, that sort of thing. But i got to admit to you, I'm serving the Lord. I'm wanting to be like Jesus. And I was driving through Palm Beach one day and I looked out the window and I said, you know, I don't like that people think I'm up to mischief picking their kids up for church, Lord. And and in all honesty, Lord, I'm just doing this for you and I'm not getting a whole lot out of this. Uh, why, Why am I driving this old bomb that I bought for $400? It's not really that great. And I heard that televangelist said, you know, that I should be prospering and I should be this and maybe I'm doing sinning or something because I don't seem to be prospering very well. And, uh, and I'm driving along to church now. And I felt the Lord say this to me. Is my best good enough for you? And my cheeky response was this is your best (laughs) and I no different no different see God's got to take you through the wilderness first and that was my little wilderness I've had a few of them I love um, Reinhard Bonnke where he's it, it, the, the rent was due on the off. He'd started his ministry off. The rent is due on the Friday at five o'clock and he had to come up with $50. I love this. And he walks down and Reinhard Bonnke, evangelist, great man of God, shouting out to God, not worried about anybody can hear, dear God in heaven, provide the money for the office. Right, gets there. Uh, anyway, Friday comes, five, 4.30 comes, quarter to five comes, Still no money for the office. And as he's walking along the footpath, no different to the prayer I prayed about the car, he says, God, you're going to have to provide the money. And he said, I heard him say this himself, God say to him, I own the cattle on a thousand hills. Would you like a million dollars? Fifty dollars is nothing to me. You want a million dollars? Ryan Hard Monkey paused on the footpath that day. And he said, no, Lord, give me a million souls. He got back and somehow the $50 was paid. And within weeks, a million people gave their life to Christ. Let's give the Lord a clap off. What did you come out to see is my question. To you. What is the prayer of Jesus as I close this right now? Here is the heart. You want to be prepared for all that God has for you. Here you are. I do not pray in John 17 verse 20. I do not pray for these alone, but also for those who will believe in me through their word. The day will be one. How can you... Love those you don't see or don't know as yet if you don't love one another. As you, Father, are in me and I in you, they also may be one in us that the world may know and believe that you have sent me. And so is the will of God for you. What did I come out to see today? I came out to see you. And I came out here to worship the Lord. And whether there be tongues of fire on us today or not, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Can you agree with that? Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we love you. And we thank you for all that you have done thus far in our lives. And so we surrender. 
We surrender our thoughts and our emotions and our intentions and our desires and our future and our present. We say we love you, Lord. We adore you. We thank you. Lord, we will thank you in the wilderness experiences and on the mountaintop experiences. And we will thank you in the valleys and we will thank you in the blessing And we will thank you when we are bewildered and we will thank you in hospital and we will thank you when we're we're full of good health. We will thank you and worship you every day of our lives. For only you 